This week, I am challenging myself to recreate this viral video from Instagram. The creator of this video, Steve Geralt, is a tabletop director and visual engineer from New York City. If you look through his work on Instagram, you'll notice that he does a lot of breathtaking visuals with some of the most expensive and awesome gear that money could buy. Now, it's easy for me to sit here and say, yeah, if I had all that fancy equipment, I could probably make videos like that too. But that actually couldn't be further from the truth because the reason Steve is able to make the videos that he makes is not because of how fancy his equipment is, it's because of the one thing that money can't buy and that's creativity. Now, what I especially loved about that video is how inspiring it is, because there's no phantom cameras, there's no robots, there's no crew. All he needed was an iPhone, a bit of hardware, and some fishing line to come up with this incredibly creative concept. That is what making videos is all about, and that's the video I wanna recreate this week. So now it's just a matter of figuring out how? Now there's gonna be three Coca-Cola cans sitting on our table like so. And then of course we have our camera. This orange marker is gonna indicate the hooks we use to wrap the fishing line. This yellow marker is going to indicate the three light stands that we have set up behind the camera and you'll see why in just a minute. And now we're gonna draw our fishing line. So the first can has the fishing line going around this first hook. It's gonna come around this light stand and then connect to the camera. Second Coca-Cola can, Similar thing, wraps around the hook, wraps around this light stand, and then our camera. Third Coca-Cola can is actually gonna have fishing line wrapped around it so that it spins. That's gonna go around the hook, around this light stand, and then the camera. So the idea is that when the camera moves forward, this is gonna pull on all of these fishing lines, causing these two cans to move this way and this can to spin. But that is the game plan. I have no idea if this is gonna work, but we're about to find out. All right, so we've got the Aperture 300D Mark II on the overhead stand. We're using a strip light diffuser to get that directional light nice and soft over top of our Coke cans. I do plan on using my actual camera, the Sony a7 III with the Laowa Pro Blends because I wanna see if I can make this look like it's actually out of a real Coca-Cola ad. We're also going to take an Aperture 120D Mark II, put that on this stand over here. Right now, Dennis is making the measurements for where these hooks are going to be placed. The hooks are what is catching the fishing line to pull the the cans to either side. Boom. So we used gaff tape to attach the fishing line to the Coca-Cola can, and from there the fishing line is gonna wrap around this, and we're gonna test it to see if it actually moves the can. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. I think we need to rotate the can just a little more that way. All right, so for our second hook, we need to drill a hole eight and a half inches from the top, so we're going to use a tape measure to do that because that's how you measure things. <laughs> Lovely. It slides. All right, we're on the right track. So we've got two cans down with the fishing line. Those are pretty much ready to go. Obviously, we're gonna have to hook all of that up to the slider so that it all goes at the same time. But the third can is really gonna be the tricky one because we're not just pulling it, it's gonna be spinning. The idea I had for the third can to make it spin is to take a longer screw, drill up through our white tabletop into the can. That way it doesn't go anywhere. Then we're gonna take two smaller screws and drill that into the bottom of the can and wrap the fishing line around it tied to one of those two screws and then as it pulls it will unravel and spin at least that's the idea I have no idea if this is gonna work in my head it does in real life who knows we have not tried this yet this is the first attempt to see if the can spins no it broke why was that so we're drilling in a third and a fourth screw maybe that'll help it rotate all right, four screws in the bottom of the can. We're gonna take the fishing line and wrap it around all four. In Steve's video, it appears that that last can is spinning counterclockwise, which means we need to wrap it clockwise. All right, this is our first time trying with four screws. We tried with three before. No, we tried with two and that did not work. So let's see if four works. So initially we tried just putting two screws in the bottom and wrapping around those. That did not work. The fishing line snapped almost instantly. Instead, now we have four screws and we're just wrapping around and around, getting that rotation. So we don't want the fishing line from our back can to interfere with the fishing line from the middle can. So what we're doing is we're gonna add another hook 
right there to keep them separate. Hold on, let me get this straight. You're saying we're gonna put a fishing hook on each fishing line and then another fishing hook onto this line, which is attached to the slider. Then we're gonna take those three fishing hooks and hook them onto that hook. Yep. And so four hooks total. Four hooks total, that way when the slider starts moving, they'll start pulling all those strings. Right, they'll all start moving simultaneously. Oh, also, by the way, I took the Aperture 120D off of the stand and just put it on the floor. Better perspective of light that way. All right, we've got two cans hooked up to the slider so far via fishing line and fishing hooks. Now we're gonna hook up this last one. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Not a bad, uh, First attempt, not great. So I sped this up 400%. They all kind of stutter, but we're on the right track, man. This is gonna look cool. I don't know if it won't not stutter. You know what I mean? Like There's gotta be a way to get it smooth. So we noticed a few issues with that first take. We think that the closest can had a kink in the fishing line that was causing it to stutter. So we're gonna replace that fishing line. Now the can that was stuttering the most was the spinning can, the third one at the end. And we think that the reason is because these four screws aren't equal distance from each other. So what we're gonna do instead of these screws is we're gonna take a new can and we're going to attach a lid, like a bottle cap to the bottom. We're gonna still have a hole in the bottom of the can to go on that screw there so it stays in place, but we're also gonna glue this cap to the bottom. That way, once we put it through, we can just spin it like that. That'll wind up the fishing line and then as it pulls, it'll unravel. Hopefully that'll be a bit smoother. <sighs> Fingers crossed. The other thing we've discovered is that this slider, because it's smaller, is simply just too slow. We need some faster movement to get a more consistent and smooth motion. So we're gonna swap out the slider one for the slider plus, and that should fix our problem, I think. Let's see if it is smooth now with the new slider. I really hope it is, because if it's not, we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Three, two, one, go. It's just the surface. Is it the surface or is it just not fast enough? I think it's a mixture of both. Okay, so we've got yet another change of plan. Instead of using the slider app and doing it remote controlled with the motor, we're actually going to push it manually. The reason for this is because in the app, we cannot get the slide to go fast enough where the movement of the cans is going to be smooth. It's simply just too slow and it makes the movement of the cans just a bit too stuttery. All right, now we're just getting everything into its final position. We've glued pieces of paper onto the bottom side of each can. That way they slide smoothly along along the surface. All three cans are locked and loaded in their positions. We're gonna just make sure everything's ready to go. I really hope this works out. We're gonna do a couple takes. We're gonna do one that's 4K 24 frames per second. Then we'll do another that's 1080p in 120 frames per second because that will give us a little more room to play with. So we'll see what happens. I say we just go for it. Yep. Yeah. In three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. I don't know. That, that looked pretty cool to me. <laughs> All right, let's put it on the computer and see. Wow. Okay, so we have two versions of this video. There's the 1080p 120 frames per second version, and then we also have the 4K 24 frames per second version as well. Let's go ahead and start with the 120 version and see how that went. All right, that is a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I'm seriously impressed with how that turned out. I think I actually like the next version more, which is the 4K 24 frames per second version, and this is what that looks like. Like, does that not look like it could be a Coca-Cola ad? By the way, this video is not sponsored by Coca-Cola. I just don't wanna get stabbed by the screw, so I'm just gonna leave that there. Now that clip you just watched, I actually already went ahead and color graded, but there are a few more things that we can do to really elevate it and take it to the next level. For example, if we put on a letterbox and add some film grain to make it look a little bit more cinematic, and then we add some fog in the background, it looks something like this. Pretty cool, definitely starting to look like an ad. Or we could just straight up go crazy with it and end up with something like this. 
Now, personally, I did not expect this challenge to turn out this well. I did not think our clips would end up looking this good, but keep in mind the fact that Steve Geralt came up with this idea is a thousand times, no, it's a million times more impressive than me just copying it. I actually DM'd Steve on Instagram and told him I was gonna try to recreate his video. He was super down for it. Steve actually has a course coming out called the Garage Online Learning Platform. And if there's anybody to learn stuff like this from, it is this guy. He has worked with huge brands. He knows all the tricks of the trade. And I've got no doubt in my mind that his course is going to be something special. I'm gonna have his pre-launch link down in the description below if you'd like to check that out. And actually when we were discussing this little Coca-Cola challenge, he actually mentioned that this is the core of what his education is all about. It's teaching fundamentals, ways of thinking, and building a toolbox so that people can try and come up with their own cool ideas. And like I said at the start of this video, that is what making videos is all about. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Make sure you check out my boy Dennis. He was a huge help on this shoot. Honestly, if I had to do this challenge completely on my own, it would have taken way too long and it definitely would not have turned out as well as it did. So big plug for Dennis. His Instagram and his links will be all in the description as well. But as always, I will see you guys in the next one.